Hi, AJ Hartley here, novelist, Shakespeare professor, baby metal fan, and we have a new song, a collaboration with Thai rapper F Hero, who everybody will know from Papaya, and another Thai band, Body Slam. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a conversation about the song with Stephen, aka Funny Toss, who you will know as a translator of baby metal interviews and a fan artist. I've had him on this channel before, and he's a great guy. So let's get started. Today, I am delighted to have my friend Stephen, aka Funny Toss, who I'm sure uh, a lot of you already know in the baby metal fan community. And um, we were going to chat about the new song, Leave It All Behind. Um, and I figured the, the the best thing to do is to, to, first, to be honest, this is not like a cold reaction. We have the song came out what yesterday? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I've and been so, listening to yeah. it on repeat ever since. Well, right. <laughs> okay. So so we have both listened to it many times and watched the video. And we're just gonna we haven't compared notes in advance. So we will just talk through our impressions. And again, to uh, sort of try to keep the copyright bots at bay, I will break the song down into little sections and then we'll chat. So if you just want to hear the song. Just watch the video of the song, right? And then maybe hop through our little conversation. I see that it's got quite a few views on F Hero's channel. So that's good news. Has it? And people seem to be enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Did, were you familiar? Obviously, everybody knows F Hero if you're a baby metal fan mm -hmm. because of Papaya. Were you yeah, yeah. familiar with Body Slam before this song was announced? No, I'd never actually heard them before. So I mm. did naturally what most people probably did. I looked up a few of their songs I did the um, same. beforehand. And so I, I learned, you know, I saw them selling out arenas in Thailand. So they're huge there apparently and not very well known elsewhere, which is something that we can talk about later, which I think is something I really enjoy um, yep. regarding this song. But and they've been around a while. The songs that I heard, yeah. Yeah, 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 for a long time. So everything I've heard from the Thai fans is that they're they're kind of a national brand when it comes to the rock um, genre in Thailand. And they've been on for a long time. So I imagine their sound has changed for a bit. So I don't know if yep. the songs that I heard were necessarily representative of them. Maybe they don't have a defined song. But I don't actually, I didn't actually like um, the other songs that I heard from them that much. Maybe it's a little too mellow or soft. But this song um, that we're going to listen to now, it was surprisingly heavy uh, in a good way. Um, so, yeah. I yeah. Like well, I mean, you know, I think whenever you hear that there's the baby metal are collaborating with somebody, the question is <laughs> yeah. always how, how exactly is this going to work? Because right. people are always talking about, oh, I'd love to see them collaborate with X. And the, and the issue mm -hmm. is always what do the different bands bring to the table? that we don't already have, you know? And I think this is a really, yeah. really interesting example. So anyway, let's, let's, uh, let's watch a little, listen a little. Okay, so, I mean, it's an amazing start. And part of what I love about the way that this kicks off is that it allows each band to frame themselves in their own terms right from the get-go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I don't... Go ahead. Three artists flabbing is not that common. Like, obviously, dual artists flabbing is pretty common. But three of them, I, I don't recall seeing that many works like that. And it's very hard to think about how that actually works just because how do you split time and, and screen time as well? Yeah, yeah. And it does seem like this is a, a very even-handed approach, right? It's not like there's one dominant and the others two are, are minor, I think. I mean, I, I suspect that the baby metal sound is what sort of shapes it the most, but they seem mm -hmm. there's a, a, a kind of a mutual respect for the different performers and what they bring to it, which I really like. Yeah. I was going to say, before we move on to the next section, I the first time I saw this, the imagery... Um, of this section with the people on the planet and then the shooting stars or meteors coming towards the planet because that was featured in the, the trailer mm. for this video 
And I think this is obviously pure coincidence, but if you're familiar with Dragon Ball, um, that's actually very common imagery that we saw in Dragon Ball, especially in the opening where they have the, you know, the space alien Saiyajin coming to Earth and to, to invade it in those little pods. And in the openings of those songs, they would have these pods. And Dragon Ball has been on the news um, recently, unfortunately, because the creator, mm -hmm. uh, Toriyama Akira, um, passed away. And it just that, that just reminded me of that scene. Obviously, based on the timing, there's absolutely no way this could have happened. But there was speculation about what those meteors could have meant. You know, people were talking about how the five stars were the five metal verse, the metal verse uh, mm -hmm. girls, because they're all blue and all that, um, which I think is totally nonsense, but it's fun to think about. But anyway, I just, I just want to point out that the imagery that I saw may have very well evoked that kind of Dragon Ball feeling of yeah. something alien, uh, powerful uh, coming to Earth. And I would guess that this kind of imagery would also resonate with some others in Southeast Asia um, as well, whether intentionally or unintentionally. But maybe that's just me uh, being an anime nerd. I, and I, I think also that that the image of whether they're asteroids or whatever is very baby metal, right? That 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 sense of some sort of apocalyptic something coming from space or something. We, we've seen that kind of imagery in their stuff before. And I think, again, as the sounds of the three bands get sort of foregrounded in their own terms, I think that this in some ways, there's something similar going on here. The first image we see is mountains and water as, as the, the body slam presenting you know part of the song and then we get the image of the wrecked ship with f hero and we get the sort of spacey stuff from baby metal so it's like again different elements that are all coming together into a something which is sort of narrative but sort of not and it's like we've got three different versions of the same core through line which obviously is that the leave it all behind of, of the title right Getting they have been using the space imagery, obviously, since Metal Galaxy. And right. then, you know, at the end of the Budokan show, they had the three three shooting stars, you know, leading off into space. And yeah. if you connect them get together, maybe it's five coming back. And it, I'm obviously overthinking this, but people were talking about how Bayman was no longer kawaii, right? After mm. Budokan, then was the other one. And it was all dark and serious. And there's a lot of groaning and gnashing of teeth about that. And when they come back, I guess, to Earth or wherever they are now, now they're kawaii again. So it's kind of like, if you want to overthink it, it's kind of like, you know, we're leaving, we're doing something different, we're coming back, we're back to who we were after a side journey. Mm. You know, who knows? And again, this is not their song, so you don't know how much this might have been intentional, but it's fun to speculate because yeah. that's what we do. <laughs> when you say it's not their song, is it being presented as... It's F Hero's song. It's, it's F Hero's song, right? Which is surprising. Yeah, it's on his yeah. channel. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. All right, let's try a bit more. <laughs> Okay, let's pause it there before we get the the full <laughs> yeah. the full baby metal chorus part. But I mean, we were just saying that the 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 difference in the images of the video that seem to go that are specific to each group, right? And that image of the wrecked ship, I think, is really really interesting because lyrically, you know, we, we're getting this sort of apocalyptic language, the language of, of disaster and crisis and, you know, which again is sort of familiar from, from, from recent baby metal, but in F hero's lyric, the apocalypse is rendered in strictly small personal relationship terms, right? On a personal level, challenges facing a person at a personal level, as opposed to a, a worldwide extinction event. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which I think is it's really interesting, and and that so you, when the image of the massive ocean being huge, but the the ocean of of tears, the ocean that you produce yourself in some ways is is bigger and more daunting. Um, I yeah. think that, that frames the song in really interesting ways. Yeah, I think musically speaking, um, when I first heard this section in particular, it was very Linkin Park ish um, to my ears, which to me is great and and makes mm. a lot of sense because Linkin Park. You know, oh man, that was, I mean, I'm feeling old thinking about them. 
because that was my high school days. I was like, oh, that wasn't that long ago. I'm like, oh, that was, that was over 20 years ago at this point. Um, <laughs> but they, they brought together famously rap and metal and pop to a certain extent um, mm. with some of their vocals. They weren't always, you know, screaming at you. And the sound really reminded me a lot about that mm-hmm. in, in a good way. Yeah. Well, and, and it, I, I think there's a natural segue in some ways from working with Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine for Baby Metal into that kind of, of sound, right? Mm-hmm. I, 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 but I got to say, you know, it, again, the, the three bands have such different sounds and we start off with that sort of arena rock and and like you, I found um, Body Slam a little. What's the word? I I liked the melodic quality of it. I liked the thoughtfulness of it, but it felt a little bland to me as mm-hmm. from a, a, from a, as a Western um, rock fan. It felt a little sort of late eighties, middle of the road, or, or so. It, it's like classic pro. It's like. Classic rock that isn't classic rock simply by age. It's classic rock by design, which to me is odd. Yeah, that's exactly what I felt as well, which is why it didn't resonate with me when I listened mm. to their their stuff. And again, I always listen to the stuff with the highest view counts um, mm. in YouTube music because I didn't know which is good. And for all I know, that could have been their, you know, their classic hits right. that from a long time ago that are popular, that were popular then, but are not necessarily what they always sound like. Yeah, yeah, but 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 here it works, right? Because yeah. especially because then we get the F Hero stuff, which adds that grittier element, and then this baby metal vocal comes in in this chorus, and suddenly it's ethereal and bright and light and and musical. I, I, it's great. It's a fantastic yeah. co- uh, collaboration, I think. Yeah, and speaking of F Hero, um, I mean, he's a bit underutilized in this song, I guess, but that's probably mm-hmm. intentional, which I think we can talk about a bit more later, which I think is really interesting. But because I first heard the song when it was dropped audio only um, yesterday yeah. before the music video came out. And I like I already liked it back then, but I thought F Hero was the, his part was the weakest part of the song. And mm-hmm. then when the music video was dropped, they very thoughtfully provided English translations of the lyrics. And I think his part benefits a lot from the meaning of what he's talking yeah. about um, yeah. more so than, than you know what that sounds like and so that elevated um his part a lot for me yeah personally. yeah i agree i i, I yeah I, I wasn't i wasn't sure what to make of it initially um but but again yeah it, it's the it's the balance of the thing the way that they the, the seamlessness of, of bringing these three totally different sounds together to work i think it's masterful Right. <laughs> nice. So, I mean, oh man, yeah. Th- I mean, this speaks to what you were saying about the return of the kawaii, right? Because th- there mm-hmm. is a, th- you know, a treblier vocal, a-, a playfulness to the to the lyric. Even though the song is in some ways quite dark, they're allowed to carry the the lightness and the optimism, and it's there both in the look and the sound. Yeah. No, my my Twitter timeline was just dominated by this picture and their various variations of it because they don't they don't really do that especially sue because she's always she's always holding a microphone you know mm-hmm. um and so everyone exploded including myself when i first saw this it's just so unexpected yet not unexpected in a sense because mm-hmm. it feels like a fit for them but we just haven't seen it in a while yeah so, yeah that, that was yeah and the audio, um, obviously the vocal parts were great. We're not, we can't just gush about what they looked like uh, because everyone knows it pretty. But to me, mm. my memory is failing me right now, but I feel like this is the first vocal duet um, Baby Metal has ever done in a collab. Like obviously in Kingslayer, both Ollie and Sue had significant parts, but they didn't really harmonize much either. It was, you know, all Bring Me the Horizon and then Sue and then Bring Me the Horizon and then Sue back and forth, you know, with different yeah. parts. Whereas this, it wasn't throughout the entire song, but you did have um, Body Slam's vocalist harmonizing with Sue in several parts, and it feels very yeah. different. And because, later in the song, yeah. they switch positions, right? That 
that yeah, in this yeah. one he echoes her line, and then later on she echoes his singing. Right, in she sings Thai, a line in, cool. in Thai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. again, that also I, I saw that line like a, a short line in Thai all over my timeline, and I looked mm -hmm. it up, and that was her line. So yeah, that obviously yeah. resonated with a lot of people. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, lyrically, you know, the 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 baby metal part, uh, the one that we just played, is much more open ended. It's much more positive. Um, it, it doesn't have the sort of the darker tonality that we've heard from the F Hero part. It also doesn't have that sort of personal specificity, right? Which you know okay. is, and I'm not saying that that means the song goes away from that. But it's again, it's like each band are getting to do their version of the title you know what i mean that yeah it's like and, and these things all work together but they also fit with the individual persona of the performance which i think is really mm -hmm. smart and interesting that's uh, so, such a difficult thing to do i'm really impressed how it could like the groups are so different how do you bring the sounds mm -hmm. together and the meaning together in a way that satisfies satisfies all of their fan bases you would think it's impossible but from what i can tell all three fan bases are fairly pleased with this song i mean yeah. i'm not as familiar with other two maybe there there there's some complainers there as there are in our community um, but overall i think people are all pleasantly surprised i i would love to know exactly how it was done how it was yeah, composed sure. at what point if ever they were in the same studio together if it was all recorded completely separately and then overdubbed or what i mean uh, you know baby metal have interacted with f hero comparatively recently in person right mm -hmm. so um i wonder if that was where the germ of this came from i wonder if he connected them with body slam or put body slam on their radar i kind of assumed that was the case yeah i did too yeah but there, there was a photo of them actually all in the same you know room you know in a, in a group photo together where oh I, with body I slam like, as well yeah yeah no all, oh, all okay. everyone in this, in this in, in like a, one of those promotional shots together so i'm assuming mm. it wasn't all green screen they were all together at the same time i don't know when it was because i don't think it was during the baby metal asia tour in bangkok that would have been too quick so they probably flew out later or maybe they came to japan yeah. who knows at some time to shoot this and record it possibly yeah, but I, I yeah, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall during that mm -hmm. during the the sort of composition process. The, it's, it's because it feels so seamlessly organic. It feels like these mm -hmm. three bands have been working together all their lives. Although, if you look at the lyrics or the credits actually of the video, it's interesting because you see that there are separate credits um, for each section. So mm -hmm. for the baby metal section, you know, there was Koba, there was Cyan Metal, we did Papaya, Mech Metal. And then for the Thai section, um, there were different writers. Mm -hmm. So they still, it, it, you would guess that they each wrote their own sections and then put them together and maybe modified them. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah. given that it's not a baby metal song, maybe we'll get more behind the scenes look at it uh, like they kind of did for Bring Me Horizon, you know? Mm -hmm. That would be cool. I'm looking forward to that. And, you know, even when, I mean, back when, when they did Papaya, you know, F Hero was obviously, it wasn't just that his voice was on that song. He influenced some of the the um, the melody line, the the use of traditional Thai instruments that could become part of that guitar riff, you know, during the rap and stuff. So I, I think he's advocating for his community and, and musical heritage as he's working with them, which I think is neat. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm. Oh, man, I mean, we joked. <laughs> we, jo we <laughs> joked about it, but it's like F Hero gave more and more, more lines than she has throughout Metal Galaxy and the other one. <laughs> but this feels like a Mel Metal Galaxy song, this bit, doesn't it? It's it kind of does, yeah. Gada dance or, or you know, that kind of, the, the, and, and or even Elevator Girl, the, the, there's a sort of, and a lyrical playfulness, and it's about dancing. It's It's got that kagero. Um, the, mm -hmm. the the sort of the the impulse to to dance through the pain kind of mm -hmm. feeling right except here it's it's brighter and 
and more positive. But yeah, it, to me, it has a lot of those kind of vibes. And this section, I think, as you mentioned, it was not, it's not quite as heavy. It's more Metal Galaxy like so mm. they have a, they, they tone down the instruments and the drum beat is much more basic to stits, to to have a sem I don't I wouldn't call that a rap section per se. Um, but they allowed Moa and then Momo to sing their parts, which again yep. is I I don't necessarily call it the return of black baby metal because this is kind of different. From what they've done before they in the beginning of the song they had the whole i know okay, the scream and dance part that i'm more familiar yeah. with but this kind of feature is really rare in at least baby metal songs um for sure where it's still predominantly sue and i do speculate what this means for baby metal songs moving forward in the next album if they're going to have more significant vocal parts as opposed to again sue and then two cheerleaders uh yeah not in a derogatory term but by, vocally speaking that's kind of what it's what it's been yeah, yeah, I agree. And I, I would love to see more of that. I'd love to see them sort of flex their, their vocal range and muscle a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much you may have been following the Legend MM concerts in Japan uh, that were happening a little while before. But spoiler alert, Momo, I mean, is obviously celebrating her, but she got a lot of vocal parts and very um, diverse vocal parts as well in ways that we didn't really expect. And I think they're going to utilize that more in the future, or at least I mm -hmm. hope they and, and I, I mean, you were at the show, right? Good man. Um, the yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I saw the video of her doing the growly voice on Headbanger and stuff like that, which I thought was 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 lovely. Um, and, and I'm generally not. A, 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 I, I like the growly voice in small doses as a sort of accent point within a song, rather than an entire song of being yelled at. Doesn't particularly appeal to me. <laughs> so. But yes, I, I, I'd love to see more of that. And you know, I mean, we've got this since the line is up on the screen. Again, as we cut back to <clears throat> Body Slam, the lyric takes on that same sort of expansive classic rock kind of feel where it's not as personal as the F Hero stuff. It's not as bright and light, but it has that kind of reflective, slightly angsty kind of feel to it, which I think goes really well with the music. And it's great. <laughs> Yeah, man, I, 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 that line that I, I saw you respond. I feel the same thing when he sings the line and she comes in over the top. Man, this is what they do so well, and it's so great to hear her supporting another another singer and you know in a, in a language other than her own. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I'm gonna go off on a minor tangent here, if you allow me. Mm. Um, but I feel like this is something that maybe underappreciated, um, especially by some Western fans of baby metal, perhaps, which is the meta meaning of what this kind of song or collaboration can mean for a smaller country or let's to be to be frank, underappreciated peoples or cultures, you know, as a lot of us here in Asia or Southeast Asia feel. Like if you look at the media or music and all that, it's predominantly, you know, either Jap you know, Japanese or Korean. Mm -hmm. or you know western european or american for better and for worse and as this is an example of bands that are maybe huge in their own country and they're virtually unknown elsewhere and it's not necessarily yeah. because they're bad or whatever or their taste is only thailand specific it's just for various reasons marketing or whatever they just never found a big audience overseas and now we have a chance to hear them you know we like it like i've heard this this, this song described as you know peak asian metal you've got thailand's most famous rock band and most famous rapper mixed with Japan's most famous metal group. Um, and yet somehow we've never seen this kind of thing come together uh, before. And just, you know, you know I'm, a, I'm also from a small country uh, in East Asia, comparatively speaking. And being able to see your language and maybe your culture to a certain extent being represented on a global stage, you know, means something. It can be corny at times, like mm -hmm. how it might look insecure 
to, mm. to some people. Like when, let's say, uh, one of our athletes, you know, wins some gold medal uh, in the Olympics and they say, oh, they're the pride of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. You would never do that as an American. You never call Michael Phelps the pride of America. It's his accomplishment. It's not America's accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And so I struggle with that a little bit because I feel like, no, no, let's let's not do that. Let's not go overboard. But I do understand what this kind of, this kind of thing of representation can mean to a people. You know, we see how Japan has, tends to embrace their stars overseas, whether it's Shohei Otani in baseball or other mm -hmm. kinds of things. And I think there is something really cool about that as long as you don't go overboard with it. So I think that's partly why her seeing a simple line in Thai can mean something, something so special um, to not just Thai fans, I think, but to those who appreciate seeing something other than the so-called mainstream. Like we're fans mm -hmm. of the metal and in part because of Japanese, but we also appreciate that they are diverse and they can embrace influences and things from um, different cultures in a way that I think they're willing to do in a, more so than more traditional mm -hmm. groups. So that's my little tangent of why this thing might resonate even more with some people in ways that perhaps fans that you know, in Europe or America that have been catered to for a long time might not appreciate. It, it feels, it might feel small, but it does mean a lot to us. I, I, I think that's a great point. I don't think it's a tangent at all. I think it's absolutely on the money. And I think that, you know, it goes hand in hand with what we've been saying about the, is respectful the wrong word, but the, 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 the appreciative, sense, I think. the appreciative, the, the sense of equality in coming into this. It's not like baby metal have, have simply sort of borrowed a couple of things and sort of squeezed them into a regular baby metal song. In fact, I would, I would go so far as to say it's the experimental nature of it uh, that makes it baby metal, right? I mean, this is, in some ways is what has defined them as much as the ka the kawaii or the any other thing that people associate with baby metal for me part of what has always interested me most about the band is their willingness to be musically hybrid and to try things that you think should not go together to bring them together and then to find a way to to give them a voice and make them make them aesthetically functional you know uh, in ways that doesn't feel sort of simply like a gimmick or, or a, a trick or something, but, but emerges with a sense of this is a real thing. This is an, an, an art object that has value. Although in that context, it's kind of ironic because Baby Metal notoriously underuses uh, their collaborators, you know, whether it's Olifa uh, in Extremes and Distortion and that's it, or like Takmas mm. Moto, one of the most famous guitarists in Japan, and they, all, all they have to do is a tiny little line, or Tom Morello with a tiny part um, at the end of the song. And I think those parts are well done and they fit the songs mm -hmm. very well. But I would like to see um, the artists that they feature getting more significant parts if it's done well um, in future uh, Baby Metal songs. That's fair. <laughs> I mean, that's his sort of shining moment, isn't it? I, I, I love yeah. that. And and I love that, again, you know, that now we've moved away from the sort of super personal relationship -y stuff that he was doing before. And now there's a sort of a very baby metal sentiment about commitment to sort of moving forward, take the bull by the horns, don't get stuck in the past. The only failure is not action, right? Um, yeah, and, yeah. and that to me is that the sort of idea that, that hooks all the different pieces of the song together, brings them into a, a sort of unified idea. Because the song, even though we said it has distinct sections, many distinct sections, it's not just the three of them, but there's so many little beats within the song. It's almost operatic in its sort of series of movements. And the lyrics feel like they're quite separate, but that sort of core through line, I think, unites them and holds them together really well. Agreed, agreed. And the imagery behind that hero, like it could be just a wrecked ship, but I think it's very distinctly Titanic ish. Yes. Um, I don't, I have no idea what that means and all, but I just found that interesting. Yeah. I mean, I was wondering if there's, 
because he does that in that first verse, he does specifically suggest that that his particular moment of darkness is a, about a failed relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And and about um, somebody being unfaithful or something like that. So you know, the Titanic is a, is an image of romance <laughs> in modern culture, but it's also an image of something running through an iceberg. <laughs> and sinking. Sure. And I was noticing as I was watching it then that as he is doing that portion, the 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 ship behind him starts to pixelate and turns yeah, into yeah. smoke and is sort of drifting away. Yeah, it's cool. It's okay. nice. That part's just way too short. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and you can I know. Make a that. Yeah, it, it, it's short, but it's cool. And I, that sound I had not heard from Body Slam in the songs that all, I yeah. dipped into. I, I never got to anything that sort of self consciously virtuosic in terms of the guitar work or <laughs> as heavy as that. Most of it was sort of, you know, um, comparatively safe. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice to hear, you know, that as the song builds, it expands and condenses at the same time. Do you know what I mean? That, that there's yeah. a, an in a building intensity to it that I like. But yes, yeah, I could double with that. And I could see in a live performance, we get a little more than, you know, the 10 second guitar solo. <laughs> I will say, you know, one of the things I like about the the core idea of the song is that it's not saying everything's going to be great. It's not saying everything's going to be happy and, and such. It's about saying that you have to embrace the positive and the negative and move forward, right? That, that everything gets left behind, finally. All, all the sort of the, the, but the intensity is part of the experience and that's, that's the good stuff, even though, you know, when he's talking about letting the tears flow and stuff like that, that it's about purgation and and moving on. Yeah. Yeah. This part that we just finished, it's very J-Rock-ish, I mm -hmm. think, in particular, compared to the rest of the song, especially with the double kicks um, combined with Sue. And it helps me imagine what Sue would sound like doing one of those stereotypical anime songs. Um, and I, I like that part a lot, mm -hmm. actually. It, it definitely fits very well it's an alternate universe um in a sense because i mean they kind of does that in a few songs like light and darkness um there's a similar section where da -da 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 plus plus a hmm. uh, long melody but I, I like that part a lot and speaking of lyrics where you were talking about now it's time for another one of my tangents i suppose uh, you found someone uh that can match you when it comes to talking too much <laughs> on your videos <laughs> but I, re I really love the leave it all behind um idea behind this and again this is pure speculation i don't know anything about the personal beliefs of these artists whether it's f hero or body slam but thailand in general is a very distinctly buddhist country um and so i think that's very unique um among i mean obviously buddhism is more popular in asia in general than some mm -hmm. other countries but Japan, for example, does have Buddhism, but the culture is not Buddhist at all um, in many senses. But Thailand is, um, for better and for worse, in, in different ways of the culture. But so the idea of something being ephemeral and not, lo not long lasting, I think, is inbuilt into the culture. And I can't help but think yeah. it may have affected the meaning and the lyrics of this song. And I think... I do study Buddhism a little bit, um, you know, more and more nowadays. I think a very common misconception about this kind of belief system is that, oh, nothing matters. You know, we're all gonna just reincarnate and nothing's matters, so don't worry about it. It's not that you don't feel things or that you don't, you don't uh, everything's, you know, nothing matters. It's not nihilism. It's that right. you don't grow attached to things because every, nothing ever lasts. Um, I think we talked about this elsewhere before possibly, but it's like if you compare a theater production to a movie, to a film, you, appreciate a theater production differently in the moment because you know it's not going to last and exactly. so therefore it deserves 
your utmost attention right now, as opposed to you know eating a bag of chips while viewing uh, Netflix on the side. Um, yep. And life is viewed in that way, at least in the Buddhism that I've been learning, where you know put aside your distractions, put aside your cell phone, put aside the distracting thoughts that are going through your mind all the time, and allow yourself to practice focusing on what you're doing right now, what's actually important, as opposed mm -hmm. to everything that's trying to take away your precious time and energy and attention. Um, and so that was also in the back of my mind as I was listening to the song. You can't help but wonder how the cultural uh, framework of the artist is affecting the song, just as Bay Middle's japanese affects the songs that they write. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think you're right. I mean, it was one of the first things that I thought when I heard the song the first time and I was like what, what exactly are we leaving behind and it led me into into that sort of zen <laughs> sort of direction yeah Great stuff. Yeah. So, um, what else? What should? What else? What have we not said that needs to be said? What What particular aspect of this dead horse can we flog? <laughs> I think we covered a lot of it, um, but I just mm. want to finish by emphasizing again. I think respect uh, to F Hero because mm -hmm. this was a, again, it's technically his song, and I think as producer, he probably put the most time and money and energy into putting you know all these disparate elements together that's clearly very complicated um as you said we would be curious to know how it happened and i think as we mentioned this was a true collaboration where each act got to shine in its own way and it's yeah. a better song for it and again that's certainly i'm not dumping on bay metal style of collaboration where they just utilize a tiny aspect of an artist but i think this was a really impressively done um, by f heroes production team if if you will and I think it's going to be a, how, how should I put it? It's kind of like how Kingslayer has become one of Bring Me the Horizon's most well-loved songs and most performed songs in their repertoire, mm -hmm. um, yet rarely ever performed live. So whenever it is, it's going to be a big treat. But I think this song is going to be in a very similar way. I can already imagine people going to Summer Sonic Thailand specifically because they feel that this song will be hard to perform live otherwise, because it, you're not going to get these three artists together very easily i imagine no, so no summer sonic in thailand who knows would you go you fly to thailand oh, man i'm already planning to try to go to fox fest um in may so another trip to thailand for to bangkok um for summer sonic assuming you know bay metal and these three groups are there i i would think about it i think mm -hmm. I'm, I'm i'm not sure i would go for one spot song specifically no, but I think if they have more interesting things to offer, because I like the diversity and the whole things we haven't seen before um, idea. Mm -hmm. So who knows? I'm thinking about it. I mean, it helps that both Japan and Thailand are only about three hours away uh, from, from where I live. I'm very flight, jealous. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll be in Japan yeah. in the summer again, but I don't know if I'll see any live music this time. Mm -hmm, see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. No, every so, trip there is a treat for sure. It's always mm, too short. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any insights you would like to share with about the recent concerts that you were at? Sure, sure. I mean, did, did you do both um, or just one? No, I could only do the first day. I had, mm. I had uh, work um, the next week and it had to be back, so I, I couldn't be there for Sunday. Um, but I, I actually wrote. Um, you, I can wrote, 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 wrote about this on my blog, of course, um, in more detail. You can link that in case people are interested. But I mostly talked about how, in a sense, the concert itself is not too surprising. I mean, sure, the set list is new, and they'll do new tricks like, you know, old metal coming from the sky, and that's always amazing. And being in that kind of venue, surrounded by like-minded people, is also a big part of that. But at a certain level, I already expected that, because it's similar mm -hmm. to what you see on the Blu-rays and the concerts. What those things don't capture, though, is the fan interaction before, during, and after the shows. And that's something that you have to experience for yourself um, in person. It's like, I mean, let's be honest, like this is kind of weird in real life, you know, <laughs> especially like they have, they, they have cutesy versions, like, you know, 40, 50-year-old old guys walking around in black looking like a cult. 
and mm. it's better now than it was when they were kids you know yeah. but yeah we are still weirdos. Like, there's people who will listen to the metal and will go to a concert, and that's not the same as being a big fan. Big fans mm. are weird. So we, <laughs> like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a fan. You're a fan. We're online. We're connecting. But in person, in everyday life, there's very little connection. Um, there's mm-hmm, little. Mm-hmm. There's few others around you appreciate your family smiles and nods and ways to change subject <laughs> after you're done gushing about them. Um, but at the venue. You're weird if you're not wearing a shirt. Like everyone's right. wearing a shirt. So, you know, I made a very clunky analogy when I wrote about it, but it's kind of like being at a gay pride parade, you know, if you're gay. It's not that you necessarily think you have to be flaming and out and all that, but it's nice being in a place where you don't have to think about the fact that you're gay just for mm-hmm. one day. You can just be yourself in a place which can be completely accepted. And again, I'm not down, you know, I'm not trying to compare one socially oppressed group to being a fan of a music group, not at sure, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand the appeal of it and that sense of comfort um, at the arena before the show. Like the show started, you know, open doors at like 5.30 p.m. And there were people lining up at like 7 a.m. And so we got there early in the morning, not necessarily to, to buy merch or for tickets because the way it works in Japan is there's a lottery system. So what time you enter the venue is pretty much set. There's no point in lining up at 2 a.m. to try and get barriers. So the reason people are there is to buy merch, but mostly to hang out with mm-hmm. one another. And that's something that you don't see as much um, in Western or other concerts uh, where big metal goes. Um, we had people handing out fan merch. Like I came back with over like, you know, 100 fan gifts and drawings made by other fan artists. Mm-hmm. And that's a major part. I took photos of people I've mostly known online for the past three or four years and finally met in person for the first time. And, and you went to the... the next time you're going to meet. Yeah. And you went to the Fox God Metal Bar, right? I did. And it was way too crowded uh, there for sure so i went there you know i said hi um, it's fun there yeah and it, yeah it, it's fun being there but it, i think it's it's not fun being there before a concert because there's just way too many people uh it's very small really early yeah it's very it is, small yeah yeah, yeah so. for sure but i mean before the concert itself there, there were there were different chances a lot of there's a lot of downtime for you to hang out with other people and and take photos and interact so that was the most I don't want to say surprising part of the show because I've heard about that before, but being able to experience it myself was definitely the highlight of the show. I mean, obviously the show itself was there, but this part has been that I enjoyed possibly as much um, as the show itself, the whole fan community um, connection. Well, also, I mean, you must be, as a translator, as somebody who's known to produce translations of interviews in newspapers and magazines and such, you must have a little celebrity shine of your own, no? <laughs> um, I mean, among the Western or so-called English-speaking fan base, sure. But mm. among the Japanese fan base, actually, I'm known more as a fan artist um, because right. they don't need my translations, but sure. they can appreciate the art. So it was fun, like, you know, exchanging artwork with, you know, artists that I've been a huge fan of for time, for a long time. And then they recognize me and my work as well. And, you know, I realized they appreciate my stuff too. So. That yeah, that that is fun for That's sure. Cool. It, it felt like there, there was not enough time to do everything you wanted and meet everyone you wanted to meet. Yeah. So mm-hmm. next time, I'll definitely try and get you know to be there for both days, uh, if possible. But it was yeah. It's if you have a chance to do it, then definitely do it. Is, is what I'd say. Well, I will say yes. Hopefully, my schedule will get a little freer. In the next few months. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't want to keep you. I know you have things to do, um, but it was really great to have you on and to hit, get your insight into this. I think it's invaluable and uh, it's always great to, to catch up. And hopefully one of these days we'll actually meet in person. <laughs> that would be nice. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. See you. And that's all I'm going to say. As ever, please like, comment, subscribe check out my books check out my patreon page check out my merchandise and i will talk to you soon thanks bye